Alright everybody, welcome back to the jungle for more fun and games. This time it's a little bit easier to get around the jungle because instead of Sotherby, we have this guy, the Psychokinesis Teleport guy. We're going to talk to him and we're going to go straight to the Courtyard of Rain. What? All it costs is your... Wait, wait, what? Ew, wait, ew. Really? Really? Well, if it takes getting down on my knees for a little bit of convenience, then I guess that's worth it to me. We're going to go to the Courtyard of Rain, and before Selkie will appear, we have to... Well, first we're going to get this treasure chest, because who can ever pass up, you know, a handful of moss? And then we have to clear the screen of enemies before Selkie will appear. Pretty simple task, just get rid of all these guys. Did he just, like, inject his intestines at me? That's a bad thing. Oh, great. Awesome. I'm confused and moving backwards. That's that's what I need to speed this mission along, that's for sure. It actually takes a while to get today's first mission here going. But we are going to be wrapping up, over the course of the next few days, the Matilda Irwin Escat Dana arc. It's going to take about five missions. It's going to take a few days, but we're going to eliminate the first of the major three arcs in this story arcs in this game from our checklist, so... Alright, there's our anti-loss spell, and now we are going to make our way back to the entrance, but we want to do that in a very specific way. We want to find the, uh, we want to find the land of the fairies first. We want to be sent back to the entrance by them, rather than finding it ourselves, because the fairies are a very important part of today's story, so... We're going to find our way there as soon as Mr. Zombie gets done thriller dancing. Alright, zombies can be quite annoying. We all move so slowly in battle, moving like molasses, but we're doing pretty well, I think. So let's find our way to those fairies. I think they're over this way somewhere. Oh, hey, hello. Okay, here we go. This is the closest place to the land of the fairies, so we're getting close, I'm sure. And I think I've gone in a circle somehow. Alright, here we are. Now we're going to get ourselves booted back to the entrance by going into the land of the fairies. Humans must leave. Bunch of gibberish nonsense. And you get taken back to the entrance, which means it's time to go to the forested ruins. Once again, man, I don't know how much more my mouth can take here. Now let's head up the way and talk to Selkie about the fairies. She'll take the spell off of us that the fairies put on us to send us back to the entrance. I sure like, totally like, want to do, cha. Yes. And even though we agreed to do the favor, she's just going to kind of force us into it anyway. So, could you try finding out whether I like that? Okay, I will. Really? Like, thanks. <laughs> yes. Aren't you just a delight, Selkie? I'm going to get away from your Valley Girl speak just as quickly as I can. And I'm going to go down here now, because instead of sending us to the entrance, that's going to get us a little cutscene. A fairly amusing one. <laughs> well, we haven't seen her yet, but yes, that is accurate, unlike the other information the fairies have. Also accurate. Whoa! Man, the things I could get done if I lived to be 28,732 years old. Citation needed. <laughs> uh, we'll see why later on. It's... It's very complicated. And yes, in case you're wondering, it does probably involve some nepotism of some sort. <laughs> Feel the wrath of feather hair! Escad's kind of a hothead, as we'll learn. So let's go ahead and talk to him to speed things along. Uh, yeah, like I don't know this place inside and out. I've already totally seen him. Whoop! 
Ooh, sassy. She just playing hard to get. So, uh, call me, baby. You got my digits. Um, cussing. He cussed. Um, I'm telling. Um. No, I think starting a war between humans and fairies would be fun, actually. So, uh, I'm going to not avoid a battle, and I'm going to follow you for a very easy boss battle that seemingly has little to do with anything. Let's just go ahead and uh, take some guys out with Lancinator real quick. Oh good, that took out the zombies. I can deal with the moth dude. It's the zombies that I was worried about. They just kind of slow you down and get in your way. They're, yeah. Alrighty. Moving westward a little, we're going to face a few more enemies before we get to the totally apropos of nothing boss fight. Very tiny boss. Actually, the boss is smaller than we are, considering he doesn't stay stationary on the ground. He's cool looking, but that's about it for him. Alright, let's run off then, and zoof. Okay, we're going to have to... Okay, Cyclone Racer, go. Nice! Okay, good. That can cut through multiple people, so it's definitely a contender for sticking around in the rotation. Too bad I didn't get any experience out of it, though. But I do have some gator skin, which if I had sold mine earlier, would have been handy to get. So I know where to get some if I accidentally get rid of the one I got from Diddle's letter. Anyway, this here is the Punk Master. Uh, no, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to fight you. And I'm not very foolish, because I can easily take you. Even though he has a green bar, bosses at this point are starting to get a little bit more energy. So, we do need to be careful of that, but they don't have any attacks right now that are really just going to hurt us terribly. Let's go ahead and fool play this guy. Oh, temporarily dizzy. That's longer than most dizzy spells last in this game. And please, game, be nice. I want to learn triple supremacy. I need to learn a new move. Please, oh, please, oh, please. Nice experience, though. That's very good. Oh, no triple supremacy yet. But now it's back to the ruins. Yep, like, totally, whatever. Cha! Ooh, mystical. Very forest fun? Oh, hey, Ascab, what's going on? So, obviously... Erwin has some big otherworldly plans for Matilda, but her more earth-grounded friends have different things in mind, and in this mission, Two Torches, we're going to get a little bit of insight into what maybe their thinking is going on here. So we're going to go up to the Temple of Healing, and ooh, looks like the prayer hall is empty today. Where's your messiah now, everybody? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know him. I've, uh, I've dealt with him before. Okay. Well, okay, here we go. And now we're going to watch quite a long little cutscene, if memory serves correctly. Pretty epic intro, actually. That fairy had pretty hair, too. two sides to every story as we're gonna see. Escad doesn't know the whole the whole side of the story here. No, 
Oh, nope, just popped in. Yes, I will be known throughout the land as Chumpy. Meow. Hmm, or is it? Matilda is kind of the mediator in these situations. It's not enough that she just has to sit on a bed and be old. She's also got to solve everybody's problems. Why don't you just take your, your beautiful tan skin and your beautiful feathered hair on out of here, Ascad. Nobody wants anything to do with your one side of the storytelling. Really friga. Uh, sure, yeah, that would probably open my eyes a little as to what's going on. Yes, all four of these people are connected. We know that already. Okay. Hmm. And I don't guess you can give plasma if you have demon's blood in you. That's kind of a prerequisite to not have that, huh? Oh, so Escat is a racist. I see. I see. I get it. Oh. Okay, I see now. Hmm. Kind of interesting that we're all siding with the demon here. Oh, no, no, no. I already heard all about it. Yeah. So, uh... Oh. Oh, don't put your hands over your face like that. That makes me sad. It's all too much. I have to leave now. Okay, I was thinking of a different cutscene then. Because that one wasn't nearly as long as one. Oh, hey, baby, who are you? What are you doing in there? Oh, snap. Get up, 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 get up. We gotta do something about this. Boy, a lot of people tend to disguise themselves as nuns. Maybe the nuns should, you know. Not to, not to, uh, intrude on the religion, but maybe they should... Oh, I don't get a choice in the matter, do I? Well, we're going to go out to the dungeons now. But, uh, yeah, maybe the, uh, nuns should wear a little less modest clothing if it means fewer people disguising themselves as nuns. So let's get on out of here. We're gonna make our way out to the map now. Well, after this, I suppose. Quite a precocious little nun. Oh man, there's gonna be some killing happening. Along with a pretty sweet boss, actually. So we're gonna go out now that the peaceful music has started up again. Peaceful times in Gato once more, for the time being. We're going to leave the town segment and go out to the dungeon. We're gonna make our way to the sealed room. Yes, to the dungeon. Alright, there's Escat. He's gonna give us the information we need, I think. This place is too vast to search. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, oh, Dana's on top of things. Maybe making some plans while she's all level headed and Escat is off killing fairies with his sword. Okay. Yeah, we want to go to that sealed room. That's exactly what we want to do. No point searching for it ourselves, but we can just be taken straight to it. That's actually very nice of the game to do that. Here we go. Here's that sealed meditation room. You know, Admiral Agbar, it's a trap, that kind of deal. And when Admiral Agbar says, it's a trap, it's definitely a trap. Uh-uh, uh-uh, don't take one step more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the old, the really old 26-year-old has had enough for one day. Take her back to her room, give her some pudding, turn on the TV. Yeah, let's start that party, and we're gonna fight pretty much a genie now. 
whose entrance is pretty sweet, yes. But not as sweet as the boss will be fighting tomorrow. Trust me, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But this is the Spriggan. We'll be fighting a palace swap with him later as well. But he can spawn enemies and uh, do some. Uh, he can he can do some pretty crazy things. He has evade, which means he'll sometimes. Ew! Don't lick me, genie. Oh, uh, we might want to get away from that, Dana. Actually. Gutter ball. Womp, womp. There we go. That ought to take off a good chunk of life bar. Wow, boy. Did he, he used evade like four times in a row there. But I think he'll start using it more when he starts dying, so. Get away from his whippy pony tail thing that extends out of his skin like that one guy in Return of the Jedi. Ew. I do like the way it wraps around his neck like a shawl, though. That's both disgusting and awesome. Let's finish this off with a good move. And totally whiff. That's awesome, too. Whoa, hello. And somehow that puts us to sleep. Nighty night. I wonder if we kill him. The skeleton guy is left behind. Well, I don't guess we'll get to know. But the Spriggan is taken back up to heaven, where he most certainly does not belong. Get away from my experience, Crystal's Dana. Thank you for fooling around and doing nothing. No, Matilda. He'll never listen to you. He's a jerk. No, no, no. The old lady could do things for herself every now and then. You know, every time Escat talks, I just get angrier and angrier. Which, bravo to this game for making you sympathize with the half-demon guy. You can stop pointing your finger now, Dana. You really don't get it, do you? I get it, but that's because I've played this game before. <laughs> I just want to die already. And uh, we get some random raw materials out of it, and uh, yay! Only Heavenly Silence comforts the ladies, so uh, maybe we ought to let her have the Heavenly Silence. Stop interfering in her life so much, but no, we're going to keep interfering in her life. And it's going to result in at least one pretty awesome boss fight, which again, I don't want to spoil, but we'll get to it tomorrow. See you guys then. Red carpet.